Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout and process video for Pink Fresh Studio and I'm going to be using the beautiful Celebrate collection and I have been dying to use that wreath paper. It's so pretty and I thought I might try to incorporate some of these really big gray flowers. So whenever I have an idea floating in my mind and I know I want to use some images like this, I just start to fussy cut and get them ready and then start to play around with them and see what I can come up with. So these are pretty easy to cut. So I cut those out and then I started to work on this wreath and this wreath took me a while to cut because it's very detailed, very intricate, lots of little pieces to go around, leaves and sprigs and twigs, but I took my time and worked on it and I cut out the inside first and then worked around the outside and got those pieces cut out. Look how pretty that wreath is. Oh my goodness. I uh, love it so much. So I'm going to use this black and white picture here and I wanted to do something different with the wreath. Instead of just using it as a wreath, I wanted to kind of run it off the page somehow. And I thought at first that I might just cut it in half and do half of it running off the left hand side and then flip the other side of the wreath and put it on the other side of the background. So instead of a circle, it looks like that. But I didn't really love it, so I just start to play around with the orientation of these two wreaths. And if all else fails, I can just glue it back together and use it as one big circle. But I thought I would just try something different and move them all around and see what looks good where and where I wanted to tuck the photo in because I really don't want to cover up a lot of those flowers because they are stunning and I just think they're so, so pretty and I want them to show. Um, this is the back side of that paper. I had two copies of it and I've used this side of it for a layout that I made when this collection first came out. It's a giant cluster of flowers and leaves. And so this is the middle part of the wreath. So I had some of these flowers that were on the back of it. So I cut those out and thought I might stick those somewhere because they matched. And I kind of think I'm going to do something like that to where the, um, the wreaths aren't perfectly lined up, but a little bit crooked, but they're still going to run off the page. So I'm going to prep my background here. This is thick, smooth, white cardstock and clear gesso. And I'm just going to coat the whole thing because I'm going to do some mixed media watercolor on the background. And I'm not quite sure where it might go yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and prep the whole background so it's ready to go. So that's dry. I'm going to kind of bring everything back and see one more time where I might want it to go. And then I'm going to use the Pink Fresh Studio liquid watercolors. And the mix of color that I wind up coming up with today, I think is so pretty. Um, I'm using four colors together that I don't think I've ever used together. <laughs> and I was very surprised at the fact that I mixed in a lot of brown watercolor. I don't think I ever use brown watercolor. Um, I never really think about using brown. It's not my favorite color by far. I mixed in a little bit of brown on my previous layout to get like a, a deeper yellow color, but it was just a, a little tiny bit of brown. But this layout, if you see the flowers, they're this really deep mauve, pink, purple, color and to get that exact color I felt like I needed to add brown and I was so surprised at how gorgeous it turned out. So the four colors that I kind of wind up mixing to get this background are the pink watercolor which is called bubblegum, tiny bits of red which is the candy apple, the brown is called espresso, and then even a little bit of purple which is lavender. And I think this turns out so, so pretty. It, it, the color, I was very surprised. And um, you can see how easily this is going to spread and run and blend on the background. Like I said, this is smooth cardstock, so there's no texture on it to get in the way when I tilt the paper like this. 
It's going to run nice and smooth. And the gesso is also very smooth. And so nothing is going to soak right through the paper. It's going to just run and blend and go all over the place. And so I'm just adding water, using the brush, kind of tilting the paper. And I just thought I would get a nice color wash on the background. And I wanted to get those deep pink tones that are in the flowers. And I was so excited when I matched it perfectly because sometimes I have to work a long time with lots of layers and lots of this color and lots of that color and see what see what this matches and see if this works to get the exact color that I want because in previous uh, layouts I've learned that different products react differently with gesso and some colors change color when they mix with the gesso and so I was afraid that if I went with too many colors that things would start to change and they would dry too light or too dark or whatever but this turned out perfectly and I'm gonna give a shout out to the brown because the brown is what made this color work so well and I was pleasantly surprised because like I said who uses brown? I, I never use brown. I'm more of a yellow, pink, and blue summer kind of girl. And so when I thought, what am I going to mix to get this deep color? Because in the Pink Fresh Studio liquid watercolors, you don't get this color straight out of the bottle. You got to mix it. And, you know, the pink is very pink. The red is very red. And so this is pink, red, purple, and brown mixed together. And look how pretty that turned out. I was... I was just ooing and aahing over it. I thought, oh my gosh, this is the exact color that I was going for. And it turned out perfectly. So don't underestimate what brown can do. Am I even saying that? I am saying that. Never say never. Because, you know, a month ago, if you would have said, I bet you're going to be loving the brown watercolor the next time you make a layout, I would have laughed in your face. But here I am using the brown and it worked. So yeah, don't be afraid to mix in some of those darker neutrals because um, just a little bit will change a pink or a red or a purple and it will just turn it into a beautiful color. So don't be afraid to experiment and see what you can come up with because I love how that color turned out. So I added a little bit of tissue paper behind my photo there and I'm going to add in a couple of those extra flowers that I cut. And then I knew that I wanted to pop up the background, or not the background, but the uh, the flowers, the wreath. So I'm going to cut up some adhesive foam here and attach that to as much of the leaves and the flowers as I can. And then flip it back over. And I think popping things up off the background like this makes such a big difference. It really creates some really nice dimension and it just sort of brings the layout to life, you know. Um, what can I say? I think I pop everything up on every page I ever make. Now this is a stamp that I've had for a while, have not used it yet. This is also from Pink Fresh Studio and I'm going to use it to create just a little bit of subtle texture and interest on the background. I'm going to just use my hand to lightly press it down and the color of ink that I'm using is Coral Reef and this is one of the little mini ink cubes that you can get um, from the Pink Fresh Studio store as well as all of the products that I'm using today. The watercolors, the stamps. Let me check the name of this stamp. I've already put it up. It is called, what is it called? You know what? Oh, it's on the back. There we go. Diamond Tiles is what that stamp is called. And I just wanted it to be very subtle. And I thought that the Coral Reef color was a perfect match. And you can just see there how soft that looks. And let me show you another little trick of the gesso. Do you see all that stamping over there on the right where that white area is? I didn't want that much of it there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretty much erase it by adding a little bit of water. And then just dabbing it up with a napkin and voila it's gone and let me say this also uh, this is the next day i did all that gesso work and the bulk of the watercolor on one day and then i let it dry overnight and so this is the next day that i'm adding the stamping on and i'm still able to easily activate it with water and then dab it up with a napkin so essentially i'm able to erase what i just did in the areas where i didn't want it 
So if you have doubts about trying gesso, it allows you to erase mistakes sometimes. So highly recommend it. Okay, so this is pretty much how the design is going to go. I'm just not quite sure if I want to push it up a little bit toward the left to give my photo a little more room there on the right. Sorry about the glare there on the photo. I'm going to take care of that in just a second. Um, I felt like that was a good spot for the photo um, because I wanted all that pretty watercolor to show. That's going from the middle to the upper left area. And I went through some of the die cuts from the Celebrate collection, the black and white ones. I'm going to tuck those in in a couple spots. And then this is a stamp set that I've had for a while that's also from Pink Fresh Studio. And it's called Embroidered Blossoms. And it also has a die set that comes with it. So as you can see, when I just had it there on the screen, there are a ton of leaves and different kinds of flowers. So you get a bunch of images there. And I just thought I would stamp some of these little tiny flowers here and there kind of peeking out from underneath some of the leaves and flowers on the uh, on the die cut just to kind of pull out some of the black from the photo because obviously there's no black or gray in the flowers or leaves, but since the photo has black in it and those die cuts have some black in it, I thought I would add in a little bit more. I'm going to go back to those die cuts and trim closer to the black lines, so trim off some of the white border, and then kind of come back and start to glue things down. And I'm going to start with the cut file. And if you remember in the beginning, I cut out those big giant gray flowers. I wind up not using those. Once I had those cut out and then I had the wreath cut out, I just couldn't make the big gray flowers work. Um, I just fell in love with this wreath as it is and I thought, okay, I'm just going to save those gray flowers for another page. And those little stamped flowers, I just stamped them right onto the background and I felt like, you know, it's okay if those some of them are hidden because I just wanted the idea of some of them peeking out from underneath things. And you kind of see the, the effect of that here. And it's just a, a little subtle detail. I didn't want them to be kind of floating off into the white space. I wanted them to be tucked into the wreath. And then I'm going to overlap that leaf there, that peachy colored leaf on top of the bottom of the photo. And then I'm going to tuck that other big one on top of the photo. And a lot of times when I look at my picture, it helps determine where the picture is going to go on my layout. Um, I like to have the people's faces in the photo kind of facing in toward or across the page. But in this case, my face is looking straight on, so it doesn't really matter. My daughter, she's kind of coming away from me and looking a little bit to the right. Like she was in the middle of laughing and trying, like I was tickling her and cuddling with her and she was trying to like laugh and, and move the other way. So naturally I, usually I would try to move the photo to the left side. So it looks like she was looking across the page, but the nature of this picture is she's trying to get away from me. So I felt like if she was to come to life in this picture and lean away from me, she would kind of fall off of the page, which is what she was trying to do. She was trying to fall away from me. So I felt in this instance that the photo looked good right where it was. And I know my photos aren't going to come to life, but in my mind, sometimes that's what I envision happening. Yes, I know that sounds crazy. It's okay. <laughs> um, what you saw me just do there was attempt to stamp a green leaf sprig onto the layout. Decided I didn't like that color green. I felt like it would be too much green. So I did the same thing that I did earlier. I just wet it and then dabbed it up and decided not to do that. Um, I'm going to leave that stamp alone though. I'm going to come back to that little leaf stamp. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start to add in some thread and I'm going to use that deep, uh, well, it's not really deep. It's more of a olive green color thread. I'm going to tuck that in on both sides of the photo. I felt like I've got a lot of pink. You know, there's a lot of pink going on. I didn't need any other pink things, so that's why I didn't add pink thread. I had pulled the pink thread out, but decided to go with the green because I felt like the, the green was the secondary color. And it worked because, you know, there's a lot of leaves going on, so... 
That's the color of thread that I decided to go with. Make sure all that is glued down. Um, all right, so I went through the die cuts again from the Celebrate collection and I pulled out that cute little small pink and orange colored scallop. I felt like that was a good little border piece to put over there on the right. And then I found a random leaf that I cut off earlier, glued that down, and then decided that I needed some more of the green thread, the green thread, what? The green thread underneath the photo here, underneath this big flower. So we're going to have three little sections of wonky thread there, and it's the same color. I just like the messy feel of the thread. I like that it's kind of random and just adds to the, the crazy factor of the background. All right, I'm going to go back to that little leaf cluster stem stamp from the Embroidered Blossoms stamp set that I tried to use earlier. And I'm also going to use the dye that goes with it. But I want to just do black and white because I wanted to, to match some of those black and white die cuts that I had already tucked in there. So I just pulled a piece of scrap card stock and I'm going to stamp it several times with black ink. And then instead of having to fussy cut those, I'm going to run them through my electronic. Nope, that's not electronic. That's manual. My manual die cutter here. And you just roll it through. I like to come backwards one more time to make sure that it cuts. And just like that, you've got your own little die cut. And like I said, that whole entire stamp set comes um, with a matching, or it has a matching die set. So you can cut those out. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to tuck those in in a couple spots. And again, I'm just trying to pull in a couple more little pops of the black since the photo is black and white. And since I popped everything up, these little leaf sprigs that I'm gluing down are also going to kind of be popped up a little bit around the, the end of them. So they're instantly going to have a little bit of dimension there. And leaves and flowers are awesome for creating dimension because you can curl up the edges and make them look a little more lifelike. Okay, now for my favorite part. I love, love, love these things. These are from Pink Fresh Studio. And they're two different. Um, I've got the crystals, which I'm going to use first. There's two different sets of these. I've not used the crystals yet. That's what these little brown ones are. Again, I'm using a brown color. I never thought when I started this layout that I'm going to be using brown crystals. But they are gorgeous and they match perfectly. I'm so excited. I'm trying to contain my excitement of how much I love these things. So the difference between the crystals, which are, are the brown ones here, they have a little bit of a flat bottom with a pointy edge. So they, they look like little diamonds. It's hard to see here because they're so small. And they come in three different sizes. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the sizes there. But you can easily glue these down flat. And then the tip of them kind of is pointed. So those are the crystals. And there are 12 different colors of the crystals. These are the jewels. These are another set. 12 different colors and the differences in these as the bottom there's a big flat bottom and then instead of having a pointy top they're flat both of them are sparkly and blingy and add dimension and texture and they are so pretty i think i've used these on several nets. I've used a lot of the blue ones in the past, but this time we're using brown and pink. I put the pink ones on top of the flowers in a couple spots, and I think these make such a big difference. I mean, come on, look at this. Look at how sparkly they are. I just want to stick them on like some jewelry and make a necklace out of them or some earrings because they're that cute. Yeah, and I was so surprised when I went through all the colors, I thought, dare I use the brown and they turned out so pretty because when they are on the white background or on top of the pink they just instantly look a different color you know they, they just they work so pretty so I am playing around with some bits from the my favorite story collection and I pulled out the white puffy alphas and I'm going to use those for my title and I'm going to split the title some of it's going to be right there where I'm working on the upper left section and then I'm going to finish it down on the bottom right section underneath kind of where the photo is there and it's going to be a long title it's going to be these days are my favorite and i thought i would do these days 
up at the top and kind of wedge them into this little section here. And I actually ran out of E's, so I'm going to wind up using a C for the second E on these, but you can't tell because it's kind of disguised by the leaves. And I wanted it to be kind of hidden in there, so you can still see what the title says, but some of the letters are overlapped with leaves. I love when that happens. These are some of the My Favorite Story chipboard circles. I'm going to use a couple of those. Uh, because they matched and I wanted to use them and I thought they looked cute. The one on the bottom there says better together and the other one's more of a, a little pink color up at the top. And my journaling, I feel like the most natural spot to put it is right down here. I've got all that open space and my pen writes beautifully on top of this paper because I used smooth gesso so it worked great. But anyway, that's the final layout. I did add the date stamp and I added a little bit of splattering back of that same color of the watercolor that I used in the beginning. But I really love how this turned out. There you can see the bling. You can see, hopefully you can see the difference. You can see the tips of the brown ones there, how they're pointy, whereas the pink ones have a flat top. So there is a difference. Um, but the, uh, the jewels are also a little more iridescent, whereas the crystals are more clear if that makes sense. Both gorgeous, both beautiful, and I, uh, yeah, I can't pick a favorite, but I hope this gives you some ideas to try. Uh, I hope you were inspired today and maybe got some, some ideas for your next project. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to link every single product that I use down below. You can get your hands on all of them from the Pink Fresh Studio store. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you have a great week.